Today, the high court issued a ruling on uh, the Assange extradition, right? So uh, I've uh, I've been covering Assange's extradition case since 2020. I'm, I'm, I've been accredited to uh, cover the extradition hearing, the, uh, you know, all the rulings and everything. And now we're at the point where the judge in January said no extradition to the U.S. because of health grounds, because... Uh, U.S. prison conditions are too oppressive and they would drive Assange to commit suicide. And the United States appealed that in October. And today we had the decision. Now, the decision was in favor of the United States. Very bad, very bad for Assange. And uh, I was at the court hearing. I attended it remotely. So, because, you know, you have a, a fi five and a half million news outlets po posting about this uh, uh, court ruling. But I can assure you, we we're probably like 20 people there. Um, so here's what happened. I, I had a live thread going. We had uh, everything go down. Now, it was very brief. This, this whole thing was about nine minutes, just to put that into perspective, about nine minutes. And as I told you, the United States appealed on five grounds. Here are the five grounds, okay? And this is what the, the court ruled. The, the court ruled that uh, the United States uh, cannot appeal on grounds, the appeal on grounds one, three, and four is dismissed, excuse me, because they're actually in letters. I'll show you in a second. They've written them in letters, but in the court, they refer to them as numbers. So what does that mean, one, three, and four? I'm going to explain this to you, okay? The United States over here said that uh, Julian Assange is not sick. He's not suicidal. They said the judge made a mistake uh, in her, um, you know, uh, when she said that he meets the threshold uh, that the ex extradition is oppressive. So they, they said that she made a mistake under Section 91. They said that the medical evidence provided by Professor Koppelman, they made a whole scandal out of this. You remember they said that, well, you know, he, he uh, didn't say in his psychi psychiatric evaluation that Stella Morris and Assange have a relationship. I mean, that has nothing to do with the, the medical evidence. But nonetheless, this was the grounds of appeal. They wanted to contest his, all of his medical evidence in terms of weight and admissibility. So today, the high court threw all of this out. They said they accepted that there is a real risk of suicide if Assange is extradited. They accepted the medical testimony from Professor Koppelman. So all the medical stuff is fine. This has stayed. The high court has ruled that this is correct, and they didn't allow the United States to appeal on these grounds. They did, however, allow the United States to appeal on two of the five grounds. I'm going to show them to you, right? So one of them was that uh, the judge should have should have allowed the United States to give these assurances before, right? The United States have given diplomatic assurances. They said, well, you know, you think Assange is suicidal because we're going to put him in special administrative measures and very bad prison conditions. Don't worry. We're not going to put him in special administrative measures. We're not going to send him to ADX Florence. He can even serve his sentence in Australia. These are the assurances, right? And, and they said the judge was unfair because she didn't tell them about her provisional view. She didn't give the United States the opportunity to, to provide these assurances. Right. So that was allowed. That was allowed. They accepted that the judge, Judge Bretzer, should have allowed the U.S. to give these assurances before. And the other point, they accepted the assurances themselves. And man, I mean, I don't need to tell you why this is very, very, very bad. Uh, just so you can see here. I'm, I'm going to read to you because this is, I, I was typing away, mashing away while they were reading this. Because like I said, it was just nine minutes in total, something like that. And they said, the court is satisfied that these assurances, these diplomatic assurances, exclude the possibility Assange could be placed in SAMS or held at maximum security in ADX Florence, either pre-trial or after any conviction. And here you go. Here's the disclaimer. Unless after entry of these assurances, he commits any future act that meets the test for the imposition of SAMS. <laughs> Which I'll get to why this is so bad. I mean, I've explained it a hundred times, but I'm just telling you what the court said. And they said that the United States will consent to an application by Assange if he's convicted to go to Australia to serve his sentence. So the court accepts these assurances from the U.S. They said this is okay. Right. And also that while he's in U.S. custody, that the U.S. will make sure he receives appropriate clinical and psychological treatment uh, as recommended by qualified medical personnel at the prison where he will be held. OK. And they said that uh, the court rejects the various criticisms on Assange's behalf uh, about these assurances and is satisfied. The court is satisfied that these assurances are sufficient to, to quell the concerns of Judge, Judge Bretzer when she blocked the extradition in July. OK. And the court therefore allows the appeal 
and orders that are be remitted to Westminster Magistrates Court with the dis- direction that the district judge, meaning Vanessa Barretta, sends the case to the Secretary of State. Okay, because in England, when there's an extradition, the final okay, it has to come from the Home Secretary or Secretary of State. In this case, that's Priti Patel. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so, there we go. The, the, the appeal on grounds 1, 3, and 4 is dismissed. That's gone. And the appeal on grounds 2 and 5 is allowed, as I just mentioned. Now, I want to show you a tweet from Stella Morris, because many people have been asking, what happens now? What happens next? This is what happens next. So, I, you, this is a statement from Assange's solicitors, from his attorneys, following the High Court decision. And they will be seeking leave to appeal the High Court's decision at the Supreme Court. Okay, so I'm just going to read you this very briefly. It says, regarding the United States of America versus Julian Assange, the decision of the High Court today has rejected three grounds of appeal argued by the USA. It upholds the judgment of District Judge Bretzer as correct. On the basis of all that she heard, it would be oppressive to extradite Mr. Assange to the USA, given his mental health and the harsh conditions he would face in U.S. prison. The High Court allowed part of the U.S. appeal, which provides assurances which were given after the evidential hearing by the district judge and only after Judge Bretzer's judgment. Because remember, Baretzer ruled in January, January 4th, I was there, uh, that the extradition is blocked. These assurances, as the high court said today, they came on February 5th. So a whole month after she'd already given the ruling. You know, so, some, some judges might say that, you know, you, this is fresh evidence and you can't submit that. And anyway, I'm just telling you what happened, right? So the ruling was on January 4th and these assurances came in February 5th. And that's what they're saying uh, in this letter. And they're saying... On behalf of Mr. Assange, his lawyers will be seeking permission to appeal this decision to the Supreme Court. The application to do so has been made in writing, um, has to be made in writing within 14 days. Uh, Any such appeal to the Supreme Court would relate to the question of the assurances. Appeals on other important questions, including questions of free speech and on the political motivations of the U.S. extradition request, have yet to be considered by an appeal court. So, just to make this very clear... The high court accepted Assange is, is uh, suffering from mental illness. Uh, they accepted that if he is extradited to the U.S., the prison conditions are so bad that it would drive him to commit suicide. They accepted all this, and they found nothing wrong with the medical testimony from Professor Koppelman. And they didn't allow the U.S. to appeal these, these things. What the high court did accept, they accepted that the, the judge should have told the U.S. about her provisional view in order to uh, allow the U.S. to offer these diplomatic assurances. And they accepted the, the, the diplomatic assurances, which is the most important point. Here we come to the big issue, because you guys know that I wrote an article uh, just a week ago about David Mendoza's extradition. Now, David Mendoza was extradited from Spain to the United States in April 2009. And he was also given diplomatic assurances. Right? They also said, you can go back to your home country, although Mendoza's both a U.S. and Spanish national, but he was living in Spain. And they said, you can go back to Spain to serve your sentence, which is just like what they're t- telling us on. You can go to Australia, to your home country, to serve your sentence. Okay? And the problem is, they didn't really say that in the assurance. Let me show you the assurance again. It doesn't actually say that. So here, here's the diplomatic note from the U.S. Embassy in Madrid. And it says that... Uh, They don't object, so they say the U.S. does not object to Mendoza making an application to serve his sentence in Spain. That's not the same thing as we'll send Mendoza back to Spain. That's completely different. And with Assange, what do the assurances to Assange say? They don't say, we will never put Assange in special administrative measures. They say this. They say they won't put him in SAMS unless in the event that after entry of this assurance, he was to commit any future act that met the test for the imposition of a SAM. Whatever that means. I mean, that's quite ambiguous, isn't it? And, uh, of course, the CIA has input on, uh, along with the Attorney General, on who is placed in SAMs. The whole High Court uh, hearing today, the whole High Court decision, the whole High Court judgment hinges on these diplomatic assurances. Can they be trusted? 